Let's talk about how to be top drawer to supersize and grow your business. Sharon Hornell from here. I have a ton of these around my house. I use, I love storage units and organization because I'm not naturally super organized. I'm a, a chaotic, cluttery person unless I organize things. When it comes to work and my work life, always super duper organized. This is an example of trying to organize my crafting and fun life with my granddaughter. This is actually an example of all kinds of broken jewelry and, and things we can use for crafts. So normally top drawer means, and it comes, it's actually a pretty modern expression. It's just from the 20th century. It means that, and it comes from the practice of the Victorian age when, when gentlemen would keep the most important things they needed to get at first in the top drawer of their dressers or bureaus. And so that got me to thinking, and I'm really curious today. I'm running around the house looking in all the top drawers and, and looking and seeing if, do I do that too? Do I keep all of my most important things or things that are most important to me in the top drawers where they're easily accessible of my dressers. So that's the real practical application of this idiom. And I would say, yes, yes I do. You know, in my desk, in my office, upper right hand corner of my desk is the most important, most often, most needed information, tools, and things that I, I need access to. Uh, in my bedroom, I've got one of those double um, sided Amoir type units on my bed and the top drawer in each side of that interestingly enough is where I keep Gifts and presents for other people So I thought well is that really the most important things to me and really it is because it's my life to me It's very important building relationships and making sure that I have something to acknowledge people on their special occasions and their special days So even before COVID-19 I was one of those people that always had a stock of different types of greeting cards in my house and different types of presents that could be given to different people for any occasion just to make sure that I always had something on hand and was prepared in the event that we needed to go to, a, to someone's house or we wanted to uh, go to somebody's birthday or wedding so that I wasn't stuck having to get out at the last minute and find a gift or, or the perfect present for somebody. Uh, is that kind of generic? People might say, well, that's not very special. That's kind of a generic thing to do. but. Trust me, I have a wide variety of things available so it meets just about anybody I know is needs, wants, or desires. So top drawer, it's really interesting to be running around my house looking at all the different drawer units that I have in the place and then what's actually in them. For example, this one, it, the, the most important thing is not in the top drawer. This is just a way to organize things. I've got another one of these where I keep different size of those clips. I forget what they're called, the clips that you pinch and they open up. You know, the biggest ones happen to be in the top drawer because when I was cleaning out my old office, that's the drawer I started filling first and I found the bigger clips first. No real rhyme or reason behind that. But how do we use this idiom? How do we use this expression to add rhyme or reason and to supersize and grow our business? Well, there's several ways we can. This, this idiom over time came to mean uh, higher level, higher quality, better, or the best, or higher level or ranking in society. And I don't think I've ever used this expression or, or even, I don't know if I've even heard anybody call somebody top drawer, meaning that they're a high quality person or have high integrity or they're a higher rank or anything. I honestly don't think I've ever heard it used that way, but I get and I understand how people might use it that way. And how we want to make sure that our business, the business that we're creating, is perceived as being top drawer. And we can do that by serving our customers to the best of our ability, solving problems for them, especially in crazy times like COVID. There's so many opportunities for us to get creative and find ways to ensure that our customers have an incredible experience with us, to ensure that they become lifelong customers, to ensure that they feel the way we want them to feel when doing business with our organization. Um, people will perceive us, and branding is all about how do people perceive us? You know, how do others look at us? How do they see us? How do not only our customers see us, but how does the competition see us? How are we seen and viewed in our industry? And so there's a lot of people that can help you to beef up and shine up and polish up your branding. It's something I'm working on personally right now because I showed up as pajama grandma for a couple of years and that wasn't necessarily how I wanted to be perceived in my marketplace and, and with the people that I help and serve. So <clears throat> our branding is one way that we can really have an impact on how we show up and how we're perceived in the marketplace. Truth is about branding, people are gonna form opinions about you whether you purposely impact that opinion or not. So why not have a spin on it and make sure it's a positive impact versus what they might come up with themselves. Politicians should do more branding, I think. Uh, so. 
that's one of the ways that we can really impact our ranking, our standing in the, the world, the industry, the, um, the niche or the market that we're in is by knowing how we're perceived and then doing things to, to impact that in a positive way, doing things that really serve our people so that they see us as the best in class, the best in our industry, the best at what we do, uh, the best at meeting their needs, their particular needs, no matter who and what they are. And the cool thing about the global economy we're in right now is that we can break that down to smaller and smaller, more specialized people that we serve. And when we do that and we're happy doing that, we really don't have any competition, so competition becomes relevant. Um, worked with a lot of companies where they weren't number one when they started working with us. And in those situations, what you do is you focus on your strengths, what you're great at. You focus at what's missing in the marketplace and meeting needs that, of the people that are missing better than anyone else. And pretty soon you find that you're number one and competition becomes irrelevant. You don't have to worry about the competition because People see you as unique and different and special, and they see you as the go-to solution for their particular problems. That's where we all really want to get our businesses to, so that we are serving the people that we love and want to serve, doing what we love and want to do, and having them believe and know that we are the absolute positive best solution for them. That's how you become top drawer. So curious? I would love if some people would share in the comments below what they keep in the top drawers of their life in their bureaus or in their offices or whatever just because I'm really really curious now to see if I am like other people or very different than other people I, I did mention that if you're gonna get robbed maybe it isn't the best idea to keep your most valuable most important things in the top drawer of of your business or your life or your house I say get a safe for that stuff but when it comes to things that are important to me uh, my last house and I haven't done it where I am now yet because most of my stuff's still in storage, but I actually built in, I designed our last home um, with my family, and in the front door, as soon as you came in the front door, there was a whole floor to ceiling unit that was uh, cupboards and shelves where all the family photos were kept. And I did that intentionally in case there was a fire or anything that happened to the house, it would be easy to access and save those. It was actually some old, I think they were um, C or A track. There was probably even some VHS tapes in there of family memories and things and family holidays. Uh, and all the photos that we had printed, you know, back in the day when we used to get photographs actually printed at the drugstore or the, the photo processing place uh, before digital, had a whole entire floor to ceiling cabinet of those. I wanted to make sure that we could access those and get those out in the case of an emergency. So that would be an example of top door, putting things in a location that is safe and easily accessible in case of any type of an accident, things like that. All right, that's it. That's our idiom for today. Love to know your experience with it. I will be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where did it come from? And how might you apply it to your business today? Take care.